can always key data into Excel by hand, but more often than not you want to import into Excel data that you've found on the web or somewhere else. There are four file types that you're most likely to encounter when you need to do this sort of thing. The first is simply a, a comma separated value file and then you might find a table in an HTML page. Uh, you can also find text formatted as a table and then text formatted as a list. This video will show you how to deal with each of these and get each of them imported into Excel. This last file shows you what the data will look like after we get it into Excel. Let me just uh, show you that. These data are uh, census population estimates for 2010 and 2011 for each county in the state of Tennessee. Got these off the Census Bureau website. Uh, just an example of the kind of data that you might want to import in this way. The goal here is to get the data into Excel in three columns. One column for the name of each county in Tennessee, another for the 2010 population estimate for that county, and another for the 2011 population estimate for that county. Let's look at the first file type that we'll deal with in this video. It's a comma separated value file. And if I open one of these up in a word editor like Notepad, what you see is that there's a, a row of information for each county in Tennessee, and the first row contains what will become the column headers. For example, here's the county column header and the first entry, Anderson County. Then here's the 2010 column header and the, the, the population estimate for Anderson County, and then finally the 2011 column header and the 2011 population estimate for Anderson County. Now within each row in the file, these data points are, are separated by commas. That's where the file name comes from. It's a comma separated value file. Now the great thing about comma separated value files is that they import into Excel effortlessly. All you have to do is find the file, double click on it and it'll open straight into Excel with no problem whatsoever. It couldn't be any easier than that. Once the import is finished, choose File and Save As and then from the Save As Type box choose Excel right there and then um, you can change the name if you like. I'm leaving it the same here and then click Save. What that does is that make sure that you've saved the data as an Excel file, not as a comma-separated value file. See, here's the file now that uh, freshly added to our list. It's becoming less common, but you will still find data on the web formatted as an HTML table. I have here in our list of files an HTML file that I'm just going to open in a web browser. This is uh, Firefox. And you can see that you have a, a, a column in the table uh, for the county name, another column for the 2010 population estimate, and another for the 2011 population estimate. Now let me just open a blank Excel workbook here. And I'm going to copy the data into this workbook. Uh, so switching back to the table, just highlight the data with your mouse. Just click and drag down through the table to highlight all the data in the table. And then come back to somewhere in the table and right click with your mouse and choose copy. That copies all the data to the, uh, to the clipboard on the computer. And then switching back to Excel, right click and choose Paste Special. Now you have a couple of options here and it's best to kind of fiddle around with them and see which one works. Um, I think in this case I'm going to try Text and then OK. That's usually a good one to start with. And in this case it worked beautifully. You see I have my three columns of data here copied straight out of the table. And, uh, and that was pretty easy. The next step would be to save this as an Excel file and then begin my analysis. The next file format we'll deal with involves a plain text file that contains data that have been arranged into a table. Let me open this file up in, in Notepad, the, the text editor, to show you what I mean. 
So you can see that, that the, the county names and the population figures for 2010 and 2011 appear in columns. And between these columns are simply spaces. Um, whoever put this together took the time to, uh, to put just the right space in between each column to, to separate them out nicely. So let's look at how you deal with this in Microsoft Excel. Uh, begin by opening Excel and then uh, from the file menu choosing um, uh, here we go open and navigate to wherever the file is I'm heading to the directory the text file we're looking for won't be visible unless we tell Excel to show us all files instead of all Excel files which is the default when you change that the file we're looking for becomes visible right here double click on it and when you do, that uh, text import wizard will open. Make sure that fixed width is selected here rather than delimited. Delimited is for importing uh, comma separated value files. Now, Excel will take a guess as to where it thinks the columns begin and end. And it guessed pretty well at the boundary between the first and second column, but you can see that it, it, it was incorrect on the boundary between the second and third column. You can just grab that line and move it over uh, with the mouse. And now it's where it ought to be. Um, and that looks pretty good if you scroll up and down through the file. If you find that you need to add another line where there isn't one, you can just click and insert one just like that. Um, and you can grab it and move it around as well. If you, if you made a mistake and you want to get rid of it, just click it with the mouse, grab it, and move it out of the area, and it'll disappear again. When you're all done, uh, click Finish, and the data will be imported just like that. I'm going to stretch the columns out here and everything looks like it should look. Great. All right, I might want to get rid of these first three rows here. Um, so we have just the columns and the, and the column headings. And just scrolling down, um, everything looks pretty good. Finally, just like we did with the comma separated variable file, we want to save this as an Excel file. Uh, so be sure to choose Excel workbook here from the uh, Save as Type menu and click Save and when I close this out you'll see that the Excel file has been added to our list. Finally let's look at some of the most difficult of all kinds of data files to import and that would be data that is in a text file uh, but is not organized as a table. Uh, typically it's organized as a list or something. For example, here we have the county data, but you can see that the data are arranged more um, vertically, if you will, rather than horizontally. Uh, each county name serves as kind of a heading for the record, and then you have a 2010 and a 2011 kind of subheading under that with the, uh, with the population estimates there. So what we have to do is get this into some kind of a format that Excel can recognize and put into rows and columns. The precise strategy for doing that is going to be unique to each file depending on how the file is laid out. Fortunately though, there are some general principles that I can introduce you to. If I open that same text file in Microsoft Word and click this icon, then I can see the formatting codes hidden in the document. Notice that each record begins with a double paragraph return. Notice also that each 2010 data point begins with a paragraph return, 2010, a colon, and a space. The dot there indicates a space. Similarly, each 2011 data point begins with a paragraph return, 2011, colon, and a space. Knowing that, I can use the search and replace function in Microsoft Word to get this data into a format that Excel can recognize. If on the search and replace dialog box I click more and then click special, I can specify these formatting codes in my search including paragraph break right there. Alright, so we have a paragraph break specified. Let's add, let's see, 2010 and then a colon and a space. Remember that was uh, the sequence of characters that introduced every 2010 record. And let's replace that with a comma. And if I click replace all, what happened in the file? I dismiss this box. Now uh, instead of that 2010 colon space we just have a comma. So you see what we're doing? We're actually going to set this up as a comma separated value file. 
Let's do the same thing for the 2011 information. We can keep everything the same as it is, just replace the 2010 with the 2011. Uh, let's see, I think we're ready to go. Yeah, comma there. Click Replace All and watch. Yeah, uh, so we're getting close to that comma separated value format that we're looking for. The last thing we have to do is get rid of the double paragraph marks between each record. Uh, so let's do that. How about getting rid of this uh, paragraph mark 2011 colon and having Word search for two paragraph marks. I can just type the code. I don't have to go through the point and click every time. And replace that with a single paragraph mark. And when I click replace all, there we go. Dismiss this box. And we have uh, pretty much a CSV formatted uh, uh, data file. Um, let's see. How about, how about getting rid of this two-line header up here just because it might cause trouble. Uh, highlight it and click delete. There. Now I could save this as a as a text file and import it just like the CSV file you saw imported earlier in the video.